Hey, today I'm talking about zone two training, and this is a really critical one and one that a lot of us just don't seem to take enough advantage of. So zone two is 65 to 74% of your max heart rate. And the reason that this zone develops your endurance is really because of something that's called metabolic flexibility. In this zone, the most important attribute is that you're mostly burning fats for fuel. Now you're still burning a little bit of carbohydrate, but the bottom line is that you're moving slowly enough that your body can keep up to that energy demand by metabolizing fats. It takes a little bit longer to metabolize fats and break down fatty acids for energy, but when you do break them down, you get way more energy from fats than you do from carbs. Again, it just takes a little bit longer. So zone two work does improve endurance uh, in a couple ways. Number one, you're burning the fats for fuel, but number two, you're also preserving the carbohydrates. So you're not really burning carbs for fuel. And that means that as the workout gets harder later, you'll still have all those carbohydrates stored uh, you know, like in the muscle tissue or circulating in your bloodstream. And so the way that you improve zone four, zone five in performance, like endurance later, is to start out your workout in zone two and get metabolizing fats and saving your carbs. This is what a lot of endurance athletes would call building a broad base, which is just basically, you know, uh, when you're at lower intensity, being really, really good at burning fats and then being really, really good at burning carbs later. And that's, that's called metabolic flexibility. The interesting part about this for health span, though, is the mitochondrial density. So if you've got more mitochondria and they're working more efficiently, then you can keep burning fat for fuel even when you're not doing exercise. And so the point of zone two is really to do that, to build up like mitochondrial density and um, mitochondrial efficiency. You'll probably remember from high school biology that the mitochondria are like the battery packs of the cells. And that's true. And what we wanna do is make the most out of having them. And a lot of people, unfortunately, who only train like zone three and above, don't get these benefits. I'll, I'll come back to that in a moment, what that means. So um, this metabolic flexibility is, is a really big deal because a lot of us, um, when, we, when we only train hard, when we only do high intensity work, we train our bodies to only use carbohydrates for fuel. And so that means that we don't get the benefit of burning fat when we exercise. It means that we bonk, we run out of energy way too early. It means that we start getting these kind of highs and lows of energy as we eat carbs. And over time, this results in increased insulin uh, insensitivity, which means that your your muscle cells aren't as receptive to insulin. So when you eat a meal and the insulin comes along like a bulldozer and it's trying to push blood sugar into the muscle, your muscle is like, no, 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 you're not welcome here. And it has to push the insulin somewhere else. And this is really uh, what is, you know, called type two diabetes. Okay. So how much of zone two exercise is enough? Usually three to four hours a week. And that means that you can combine a zone two workout with weights. Here's the challenging part, staying in zone two. So for to develop zone two and develop like fat burning capacity, you have to stay in zone two. And that means you can't like elevate yourself up to level three and then come back to a level two because as soon as you enter zone three your body starts breaking down carbs for fuel and once that process has started you can't shut it off again so your energy demand goes up a little bit to get into zone three but the balance of the energy that you're getting dramatically shifts towards carbohydrates so you stop burning fat for fuel as much um, so here's where this becomes like super duper relevant when you're doing high intensity interval training only, for example, what can happen is that you train your body to preferentially use carbs more over time and you detrain your ability to burn fat for fuel. So um, your body quickly doesn't have that, that base and you quickly jump up into like zone three heart rate. And so after a decade of doing CrossFit, for example, I would get on my bike and I'd be riding around on my bike and if there was a sprint or a climb, I would dominate because I was so strong in zone three, zone four, and even zone five, you know, especially zone four and five, like something that took 30 to 45 seconds of maximal output, I was super good. The problem is that I had like one match in my matchbook to burn and that was it. And 
I could only last for about an hour and I was completely toasted and I couldn't recover from after like one or two hard outputs. And you know, these longer rides, I, I wasn't able to really burn fat for fuel. So I would be eating the whole time that I was on the ride. And afterward, I would have such low blood sugar that I would be like exhausted for the rest of the day. So you train your body to get really, really good at like zone four and five, and that's fine. But if you're not also taking care of zone two, you're not going to be able to operate at a low level for a very long time. And that's what a lot of people would call aerobic endurance because you're able to metabolize energy from fat while you're still breathing at a fairly normal heart rate, aerobic. And um, that's kind of the broad base that most fitness is built on. So we want to we want to spend time in zone two. It's like the most the most boring zone maybe to stay in if you're used to going out really hard because it's just hard enough that you can't, you're not just out for a nice leisurely walk, you're working a little bit, but it's not hard enough to feel like a challenge. The, the one nice thing about it is that you're not working so hard that it's hard to monitor where you are. Like if you're doing Fran or a crazy hard zone four, zone five workout, you don't stop to look at your watch and see where your heart rate is. But zone two, you can do that a lot. And so what a lot of us do in, in zone two training is uh, we just really simply distract ourselves. If you're doing it indoors, you can watch a show. If you're doing it out on the road, you take a scenic ride, you know, or uh, you take a long walk, you start far away from home and you walk to home or whatever. We use gadgets, electronics, we track everything that we're doing. Because zone two doesn't feel like a big challenge all the time, sometimes you really have to work to stay engaged. But um, some people, now the downside is that like some people only train in zone two and so like they they work at a low heart rate and they do these crazy long runs but they're never really going fast and they're never really sprinting and over time they're unable to effectively metabolize carbohydrates which means they can't sprint they can't like race up a hill and so you'll meet these old runners who have like one gear right and they they're they can coast they can run a marathon maybe they've run 30 marathons but they're never going to sprint and a lot of that is because they've spent too much time in zone two so they the key here is constant variance, but I, I really focused on this zone because most of us don't work there enough.